Hello and welcome to the first part of the Tetrazol videos on the new channel here. So hopefully you like these videos, um, they'll be a bit longer, uh, hopefully you don't get too sick of my voice and hopefully you don't get too angry at me for uh, ripping this idea off Doug and just generally doing everything he does except slightly worse. So yeah, alright, let's get into it. Okay, so Tetrazols are five membered rings involving four nitrogens and they're interesting because they are explosive um, and only contain carbon, nitrogen, and hydrogen generally uh, which is great because it doesn't contain any heavy metals in it um, so uh, new research is being put into them to as replacement for such things as lead azide and uh, silver salts because they're a lot less, less toxic and hopefully that, that a lot of them will have better properties than the metal salts anyway. Um, we're going to be making them from over-the-counter over the chemicals and to do this um, I haven't come up with a lot of this myself. There was a really good publication by Guy, username Guy with the username of Engager um, in Science Madness a few, a few years ago and he described how he made this base tetrazole, 5 amino, amino tetrazole from uh, commonly available materials. So, what, roughly, what, oh, I don't want to spill explosives in the lab. Anyway, we're going to be following the. Um, oh, sorry, scared me a little. Um, we'll be following Engage's synthesis mainly, uh, whether a bit of my input. So, in this first video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be heating urea to form calcium cyanate. Um, so, forming heating urea in the presence of a calcium salt or calcium oxide. Um, it's quite a dreadful reaction because it produces uh, a bit of ammonia, quite a lot of ammonia, and it foams quite a bit. I've done this, done most of these steps a few times to make sure they actually work, but we'll be doing them larger scale this time and I'm not entirely sure they'll work again. Um, but yeah, so this, this method is alright, but it does use calcium oxide, which not everyone has. You can buy it, it's pretty cheap. Here it's about, or oh, I think it was $12 -y ruse for about 25 kilograms, so that's pretty cheap. Um, now there's another method which also works. Let me try and not put it on the explosives. Um, which involves heating this urea up to form the cyanic acid and then extracting that cyanic acid with sodium hydroxide solution to form sodium cyanate and then do using the aqueous step to make um, calcium cyanate. Now this is um, now this first step has a disadvantage that heating up the urea to form decomposition products will form some other um, other decomposition products like um, I, I don't know I don't know what their names are they're organic chemistry it's not really my area um, and at no point are they like purified out so in this step you get the you get the improvement that you will purify out some of those um, byproducts but you do get the disadvantage that you're introducing introducing some alkali metal um, ions into this and this is bad because if you have alkali metal ions in this later steps we're going to form the cyanate and then in later episodes we're going to um, it, uh, uh, we're going to put the cyanate to high heat so there's a chance if you have sodium ions or potassium ions in there you're going to form some cyanide which even later will form hydrogen, hydrogen cyanide so that's a terrible idea so um, because of that we're not going to use this step and we're going to not this method and we're going to use this method and we're going to heat um, the urea in the presence of a calcium base um, which I have to find somewhere I'm pretty sure there's some around beautiful doubt here anyway um, so I asked my dad if he had any calcium oxide uh, lying around because I didn't want to buy 25 kilograms seeing as we are not going to use 25 kilograms to make this um, so because he makes mortar for he builds walls and just generally engineering things around the place um, and he said no he doesn't have any calcium oxide but he does remember hitting a few bags of mortar stuff with the mower 
like a while ago. I don't know how long a while ago is. It could be months ago for all I know. Anyway, that's those. Those aren't. Well, that, I've. Yeah. I, I, well, I mean, I had to search through the grass, and yeah, I totally found in the middle of our paddock. This appears to be a pile of um, calcium oxide. Now, it's probably been here for months, to be honest. So, I reckon in the rain, in the I reckon calcium oxide reacts to form calcium carbonate over time. Um, so this is probably all calcium carbonate or a mixture of the two. Um, it'd be pretty easy to test this and I'm pretty sure we can directly use calcium carbonate as opposed to calcium oxide anyway. So this is good. Just have to clean off some of the ants and the leaf litter off this and we can use it. Very strange that I find my reagents just lying in the middle of the paddock. I wish it happened more often. Now we have some hydrochloric acid here and if we add some of our white powder from the paddock we can see it bubbles quite violently um, releasing CO2 um, so it's calcium carbonate. Um, if it was calcium oxide it would react but it wouldn't bubble like that. So that's a pretty easy test to do. Okay so we're going to be doing this on twice the scale that I did it previously, and previously I used 180 grams of urea, so if my maths is correct, we're using 360 grams of urea. So I'll weigh that out, and then I get to the joy of uh, crushing it up, so um, this is this is never going to work, is it? Hold on, let's see how this... Oh yeah, no, it's working so well. Please, no, love me. God. Wow, this is going to be a lot of urea. Alright, so that is 360 grams of urea, and I didn't spill a single bit of it. And I just realised how much grinding I'll have to do. Um, I don't really need to grind it down, I guess it would be better. Um, so instead, I went looking around the shed to see if I could find a blender, and it took me about 10 seconds and apparently this is a blender. This looks like a blender, right? Yeah? Let's see if this works. So good news, the blender does appear to work. Uh, bad news, it doesn't have a lid. But yeah, what could possibly go wrong? Don't try this at home. Oh god, that's loud. Where's my hearing protection? Oh man. All right, let's try that again. Wow, everything went better than expected. Here is 200 grams, or approximately, or well basically exactly two moles of the calcium carbonate from the paddock, and I guess the reasonable thing now is just to calmly mix it with the urea, which is not what I'm going to do. I'm going to chuck it in the blender because I can. Blender. But will it blend? That's my lid. Hearing protection. Glasses. Okay, so I've come to somewhere a bit more abandoned because of the smell, and we're going to dump our calcium carbonate and urea blend into this paint tin here, um, and then heat it. Now, last time I did this reaction, it foamed a lot, so I'm sort of expecting that again. So yeah, things are starting to get ugly here. Um, probably going to need a rod to stir it to try and keep that uh, foam level down a little. Oh yeah, and there's the smell. <sighs> the thing I hate about ammonia most is a lot of times I don't detect it by smell straight away. It's actually my eyes that pick it up first and all of a sudden my eyes start to hurt a lot. That's not, I'm assuming the eyes are getting really basic because of the gas is dissolving in the liquid in my eyes, which is horrendous. 
but yet yeah, you can see it is melting and pouring out a bit of gas and hopefully it settles down so I can leave the area and don't have to stay here and maintain it oh yes please stop doing that nope 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 get away oh, disgusting absolutely disgusting now the good thing about this reaction is that it does have a very uh, noticeable end point in that when it stops m being a liquid um, uh, the reaction is finished so that's because the product that we're trying to form the calcium cyanate has a higher melting point than the decomposition of urea so hopefully we will be able to easily see that man this reaction is difficult to control or maybe you're just not meant to do it on this larger scale, I don't know. So I found raising it off the heat source so it doesn't get so much uh, heat at once uh, does make the reaction slightly more controllable. And I'm hoping it doesn't bubble over here and just sort of stays at the lip of the container. Uh, I can hope, can I? So I think I've got a nice height and a uh, sort of flame level here it appears to be sort of staying at this level which is nice okay we're about half an hour in and it's still bubbling reasonably well so about uh, 50 minutes in now and I'll put it back on the full heat like it's not suspended above the flame anymore so that's why the reaction is quite violent but you can see it's not really bubbling so much anymore which is uh, which is nice. So hopefully it should be done soonish. But I I don't really know. It could still be a little while. Okay, we're an hour in, and I think I'm gonna have to evacuate my entire city. It's pretty bad. Oh, it's actually it's not overwhelming, but it's just because I just hate any presence of ammonia around. It's uh, just not my thing. Okay, we're an hour and ten minutes into it. And we're still producing a lot of gas, but it looks like it is definitely starting to solidify down at the bottom there, which is great. So we're nearly done. All right, so this is done. Um, so you can see down the bottom there, there's it's quite turned out quite white, which is quite nice. Um, you can see a bit of un, um, fully decomposed um, melt on the top there, that brown layer. I just lost power. Oh, it's back. Alright then. Um, yeah, so that is it for this episode. Next episode we'll be turning this into calcium cyanide using a lot of heat, which is a little bit more complicated than that. But I'll see you then.